In this video, something a bit different. I'm here with my little co-star. This is Titch, a uh, 15-year-old Jack Russell, who is now part of our life, uh, as well as Diego and the Hublets, of course. Uh, and I was just re reminiscing about this very car, Betty the Ford Fairmont. And uh, I was going through old video files, found an entire episode of my travels around New Zealand, but at the time I deemed too miserable. Uh, I, I was feeling really quite glum as I came up the west, the northwest coast of the South Island um, in New Zealand. The weather had been absolutely terrible, and uh, I'd, I'd had a really bad night sleeping in the hotel. So it's it's extreme grump nut in this one. So um, never seen before footage, never before seen footage even, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So let's jump back to this is towards the end of 2019 december 2019 i had no idea this little mischief maker would be my life you having fun down there well um i've had a pretty awful night's sleep at the commercial hotel um, there's a really noisy fan or something next door and um, the staff were out chatting merrily outside my bedroom window at half six this morning that was appreciated not um, but um, Betty is loaded up. Uh, I've decided not to bother them for breakfast. I will go and find breakfast elsewhere. Um, but yeah, I'm going to push on because um, the day doesn't seem too bad. It has rained a lot overnight. But um, yeah, places to be, things to do. Nelson is the main place to visit today. So we're going to see how the open road treats us today. So about 200 kilometres to cover today, uh, should be a fairly easy day but I do want to have a good nose around Nelson so we'll um, spend some time there and then make my way to Nakuta Bay I think it is, um, it should be quite spectacular right at the top of South Island where um, the ferry comes in so uh, that should be a nice way to end the day, we'll see how the weather treats us. Well this is Nelson then, um, it's a bit wet but um, it's definitely a bit towny. Uh, see if I can find somewhere to park. Oh I'm so not in the mood for a city today. It's just awful. There's, um, nowhere to park and uh, machines would demand money but I haven't got any change you, you're just like well actually maybe I just won't even bother parking in a city actually the weather's crap so I'm gonna head out of town see if I can find somewhere to get a nice cup of tea but it's less faff with parking K-size wagon R by the look of it uh, much dinkier than the ones we got in Europe Well, this rev weather is um, pretty demoralising, so I'm afraid I'm giving Nelson the swerve. I just can't be doing it. We're trying to find somewhere to park and then just find myself in a town centre surrounded by the sort of awful shops I don't really like. So um, I'm going to continue along the north coast of the South Island and uh, see um, if things improve slightly. Nelson was one of the places where cars were manufactured. Uh, they manu well, they assembled rather um, Jaguars and various other British Leyland products here. And uh, when that started um, all falling apart, they switched to Honda. So um, quite a few Hondas were locally assembled until um, the well, actually I think it might have continued until about 1998. So, um, not a bad inning, really. So the most interesting vehicles I've seen off camera, just to tease you today, Mazda 929 wagon in what looked like metallic brown, and got a slight bit of scene going on, it looked lovely. And a Lada Samara, uh, so that was nice. Oh, I should also point out that, unsurprisingly, there is a car museum in Nelson, but, um, yeah, I was looking through the pics and just going, well, I've seen these cars before, and that includes a cord. Um, so, uh, yeah, I decided to give it a miss. I've just 
feeling a bit museum though, feeling a bit journey though to be honest. So um, yeah, just continue to take it easy and find pie. That seems the best approach. We've still got about 77 kilometers to go today. Um, but there may be diversions yet. I'm, I'm still um, several hours too early, so I might go and do some exploring. We'll see. So this is Queen Charlotte Drive, and um, it is one of those places that's just um, magnificent. It looks much better when it's not pouring down with rain, and there's a lot of silt in there. It was a lot more blue the last time I was here. Because I've actually driven along this road before. Uh, excuse me if I get back in the car, because it is rainy. Uh, but yeah, I have driven along this road before when I first came to Picton about a month ago. Um, Stan took me to um, a pie shop uh, in Havelock, so Stan who I stayed with in the lovely caravan, which seems like a lifetime ago, it was actually just about a month. Quite amusing, that falcon wagon almost just crashed, that was funny. Um, so yeah, we jumped in his Toyota Alphard and off camera we drove along this road and um, this is what Queen Charlotte Drive looks like. Uh, oh, it's a handy refresh rate, isn't it? But you can, um, oh, no, not that. You, you can see it gets a fair wiggle on. It's just bend after bend after bend. And it must be said, a Toyota Alphard is not really the best vehicle for that sort of terrain. So it'd be interesting to see how the um, Falcon or Fairmont compares. Right, I can give you almost a driver's view. You'll see it's just bend after bend. And while the um, Ford Fairmont is um, not exactly the finest handling machine, uh, the steering's a bit weightier, uh, the body roll is a bit less, and uh, yeah, it feels a, a bit more suited to this terrain. So yeah, I mean really you want to be in a Mazda MX-5, that would be um, ideal for this sort of road I think. Not a um, Toyota Hilux like the one in front of us, or an enormous Australian barge. But nonetheless, I, I think Betty accounts for herself rather well. There is a special treat before we depart Picton and head back to the North Island. We're going to take a look at the Edwin Fox. It's a remarkable ship, it dates from the 1850s, it was built in what was then Calcutta, now Calcutta I think, uh, in India, and um, it brought some of the early pioneers over as well as taking convicts to Australia, and uh, it has somehow managed to survive despite being used to store frozen, uh, well, actually it was used to freeze lamb carcasses at one point. Uh, then it was used to store coal and uh, spent 65 years being used as a coal dump then spent 20 years pretty much just abandoned in the harbour or around the corner from it and uh, has since been brought back here I think it was 99, 1999 it came here and uh, now it's undercover and they hope to launch some restoration but what's remarkable is you can go aboard. So I think we'll do just that. Gosh. And look at that. You can see the original woodwork. Burmese teak was used extensively for things like the beams. So yeah, 150 years ago. Well, like 170, I guess. No. Yeah. This was put together in India. Quite extraordinary. Well, that's unexpected. We can actually come down here. 
see these original timbers. See some of the ironwork used to reinforce the structure. Some serious damage here when it was dumped um, in the harbour and the sea level would rise and fall each day. So where the wood was below the surface of the sea, it's still very sound and fairly sound above it as well. It's where the two mixed that caused the problem. Sorry, I watched a video before I came down here. I didn't just know all this stuff. It's just extraordinary. Playing a game of how close cooked to a cormorant can you get? Pretty close it turns out. Oh well we really are getting a bit of um, everything today. This is the train I saw parked up when I came in to Picton a month ago and uh, actually steaming today. Big old tank on the back. Ashendale. Number 163 from 1915. Uh, it's just come in because of uh, big cruise ship in. And uh, yeah, lots of happy, happy cruise people been out on that today. It appears to be the end of the light. I'm not sure where it goes next. I guess that's the patchou done for this one. Oh. 